Hi, my name is Stepan, I'm from Soroka. Today we will discuss universal and existential quantification in Haskell and how to use both quantifications on practice. Without further ado, let's proceed to the main topic of this presentation. We will start with universal quantification because it's the default quantification for every type variable in Haskell. Look at the type of ID function. It takes a value of any type and returns the value of the same type. Implicitly, it already have a for all quantifier for a variable. But now let's add it explicitly. The syntax is quite simple. Before you write any function types or constraints, if you have any, write the for all keyword. Then the type variable, a here for example, and the dot at the end. This is how the definition of ID looks with an explicit quantifier. If we want to add more type variables, we can define them space separated in the for all part. I'll write for all, then all type variables introduced in the type of the function, then dot. If you want, you can add some constraints afterwards, and after that, the simple uh, definition of function. However, note that if you introduce not all type variables in the for all part, it will result in error because the compiler will argue that you need to introduce all type variables you use in the function definition in the for all part. Let's talk about the usage of universal quantification. Well, the benefits of using universal quantification are not obvious because universal quantifier was already there, though it was implicit. However, it has its own meaning and also many Pascal extensions benefit a lot from using universal quantification explicitly. For example, the list of such extensions you can see on the slide. We'll talk about some of them later. The meaning of universal quantification is that the type variable should be specified at the call site. When you call a universally quantified function, you or the compiler should deduce the appropriate type for all type variables. One of the extensions that benefits a lot from using universal quantification explicitly is type applications. It allows you to pass types as function arguments to a function. In order to do that, you need to write add sign and the type that you want to pass. The order of the type variables is the same as their order in which they are first introduced in the type definition. The wildcard, which you can see on the slide, means that you don't bother which type you should pass to the function and you let the compiler decide it. However, note, here we have very long func which takes several type variables. But, for example, we want to specify only the last two. So, in my example, I specify IO and INT. However, note that since they are the last type variables in the function definition, you need to pass several wildcard types in order to make th this work. It's quite long, right? Using explicit for all and universal quantification allows us to fix the order of type variables and change it without changing the order in the function definition. Now we can specify only two first variables since they are the necessary for us. While this example is quite unrealistic, at least without any constraints, there are plenty of places where you want to use specific order of type variables for convenience. Scope type variables is an example of extension that simply won't work without explicit for all. The example on the slide will result in error because the compiler can't match the variable a in the outer function and the variable a in the inner one. Enabling both extensions will negate this problem and allow you to use example as expected. Now turning to existential quantification. There is a tricky thing. Since both definitions shown on the slide are equivalent from mathematical point of view, Haskell uses for all quantifier even for existentially quantified type variables. Existential quantification can be used both in data types and in functions. We will start with using existential quantification in data types. Here is one example. We have a data type lm and in the second part of the definition in the constructor, before the constructor, you can see a for all quantifier. This is example of the existentially quantified type variable in the data type definition. Note here that we don't have a variable on the left side of equality sign. This means that we don't bother of introducing the a type variable every time we use lm. We can use existential quantification in data types, for example, for creating heterogeneous lists. Here, multi-type list uses lm as the type of the element of the list, but inside every lm we can store any type we want. However, there are not many things we can do with such list. To print its elements, we need to add the show constraint, but there is no type we can add the constraint to because the type exists only in definition of lm. The situation may be improved by adding constraint to a constructor arguments itself, since it's the only place where we have a type variable to add constraint to. Note that it's the one of the possibilities to add the constraint to a data type argument, 
and also it's the only place where we can add the constraint to existentially quantified type variable. The most famous place to use existential types is the so-called sum data types. For example, sum exception. It's the one of the most well-known types used to catch exceptions in the Haskell. It allows you to catch exception of any type. The exception is wrapped inside the sum exception constructor before it's thrown. Now let's unwrap the exception inside. We can do something like this because we can provide the information about the type inside and compiler will fail with error. Luckily, there is a from exception function that allows you to check the type variable inside and the extract appropriate type. In order to explain existential quantifications and functions, we need to briefly introduce extension rank and types. By default, Haskell supports only rank zero types, which are simple monomorphic functions, and rank one types, simple polymorphic ones. If we start to take functions as an argument, we will get functions of the higher rank. Existential types are defined as follows. Rank one type have a for all that does not appear to the left of any arrow. Here you can see it on the slide. The type variables bound by the for all are universally quantified. Rank two types take a type of rank one, but not higher, as an argument. In other words, they may have for all that appear to the left of exactly one arrow. Similarly, rank three types take a type of rank two, but not higher, as an argument. So what's the difference between existential and universally quantified variables? In general, a rank n type is a function whose highest rank argument is n minus one. A type variable is universally quantified if it's bound by a for all appearing to the left of an even number of arrows. A type variable is existentially quantified if it's bound by a for all appearing to the left of an odd number of arrows. Sounds quite hard, isn't it? Well, while the definition itself doesn't provide any useful information in practice, the practical part is far more fascinating. Let's try to get the idea from the example. Here we have a function that while executing produces some logs. The point here is that the func doesn't know where and how the information will be logged. So it takes a logging function as an argument. Moreover, we want to log any type that has a show constraint. So what types should the logging function have? You may think that it takes a type variable as an argument, produce IO action, and somewhere there should be a show constraint. Sounds fair. However, this implementation won't work. While inferring types for a function in main, the compiler will struggle. Universal quantifications mean that we need to get the correct type for a type variable here in the main func, but we can't. Since inside main, in one place we have a as an int, and in the other one we have a as a string. Existential quantification, however, means that we need to specify type variables at the use side. That means that we don't need to bother about specifying a in main function. Instead, we need to specify type variables on every usage inside the func and nowhere else. Now we can use func as expected. Note here that the type applications here are not necessary. The compiler is smart enough to deduce the appropriate type itself here. To sum up, we had take a look at Haskell quantification system. Let's repeat what we have learned. All variables are universally quantified by default. Universal quantification allows you to infer types on the call side meaning that we get concrete types when we call the functions with type variables. Existential quantification, on the other hand, exists both in data types and in functions. In data types, it allows us to hide type variables. In functions, it allows us to infer types on the use side when we use existentially typed variable. I hope that the presentation helped you to understand Haskell's quantification mechanism and how to use it in practice. Thank you for watching. If you like to get more tutorials on Haskell or any other type of videos, please uh, subscribe to our channel, click notification button and also comment what you like. Thank you very much. See you soon.